Welcome to my YouTube channel. Our today's topic for discussion is clean room classification for pharmaceutical industry. In today's discussion, we will discuss one introduction to qualification approach, three qualification stages, four performance qualification, five summary, six reference. One, introduction of clean room and clean zone. One, what is qualification? It is an action of proving that any premises, systems and items of equipment work correctly and actually lead to the expected results. The meaning of the word validation is sometimes extended to incorporate the concept of qualification. 2. What is validation? It is an action of proving, in accordance with the principles of GMP, that any procedure, process, equipment, material, activity or system actually leads to the expected results. 3. What is specification? It is a list of detailed requirements with which the products or materials used or obtained during manufacture have to conform. They serve as a basis for quality evaluation. 4. What is clean area? It is an area with defined environmental control of particulate and microbial contamination, constructed and used in such a way as to reduce the introduction, generation, and retention of contaminants within the area. 5. What is clean zone? It is defined space within which the number concentration of airborne particles is controlled and classified, and which is constructed and operated in a manner to control the introduction, generation and retention of contaminants inside the space. 6. What is airborne particle? It is solid or liquid object suspended in air, viable or non-viable, sized between 1 nanometer and 100 micrometers. 7. What is heating, ventilation and air conditioning hook? It is the technology of indoor and vehicular environmental comfort. Its goal is to provide thermal comfort and acceptable indoor air quality. Qualification approach, including the model. 1. Planning or develop commissioning and qualification plan, which include project scope, system boundaries, roles and responsibilities, deliverables. 2. Quality risk assessment, which includes impact assessment of system and components, utilization of risk assessment tools, FMEA, fishbone diagram. 3. Commissioning testing or reports, which includes design specification or review, factory acceptance testing, installation verification, functional testing, summary reports. 4. Qualification testing and reporting, installation and operational qualification which includes installation qualification, operational qualification, summary reports, system and equipment release for performance qualification. 5. Performance qualification, which includes challenge study, regulatory requirements, summary reports. 6. Acceptance and release, which includes approval from SMS, authorized by head of quality, release for process verification and commercial production. The Model for System and Equipment Qualification Step 1. Use or User Requirement Specification Step 2. DQ or Design Qualification Step 3. FAT or Factory Acceptance Test Step 4. Commissioning or Site Acceptance Test Step 5. IQ or Installation Qualification Step 6. LQ or Operational Qualification Step 7. PQ or Performance Qualification All this process will be carried out using change control. Qualification stages of URS, DQ, FAT, IQ, and OQ. Why user requirement specifications is necessary. 1. The detailed specification for required equipment, facilities, utilities, or systems. 2. Defines the quality and GMP requirements. 3. ERS is generated for more complex system and will be a point of reference throughout the validation life cycle of IQ, OQ, and PQ. 4. Her specification forms the basis for testing during the performance qualification PQ. User requirement specifications include 1. Details of site 2. Category of product 3. Productivity requirements 4. Safety features 5. Regulatory requirements 6. Dimension and MOC 7. Automation and computerized system 8. Environmental conditions what is design qualification? It is documented verification, 
that the design of facilities, systems and equipment is suitable to meet requirements relating to user requirements, specification and current good manufacturing practices. The design qualification shall be completed prior to delivery of the equipment and, if possible, prior to any factory acceptance testing FAT or site acceptance testing SAT. The next two of WHO guidelines for pharmaceuticals defines it as Qualification and validation should establish and provide documentary evidence that the premise, supporting utilities and equipment have been designed in accordance with requirements of the GMP. Design qualification include Design qualification shall comply with GMP and in detail against each point of URS. Design qualification can be also called as design specification or design verification. In case of complicated or more advanced automated system, the design qualification can be subdivided as functional design specification and hardware design specification. PNID diagrams, layout drawings, functional design specification, hardware design specification. Component data sheet, material certificates, the design qualification, normally a desk-based exercise, which is utilized to identify flaws or issues in the design of the system. Factory acceptance test, it is a test conducted at the vendor's premises to verify that the system, equipment or utility, as assembled or partially assembled, meets expected specifications, the FAT will have a protocol, which will be provided by vendor and approved by client before execution. It is important to note here that it is recommended that the factory acceptance test will be performed for critical equipment as relevant. Factory acceptance tests consist of following steps. 1. Drawing and layouts, GIA drawing, electrical drawing, IO list and P&ID diagram verification. 2. Operation verification, key functionality testing, alarms, safety feature verification and other system, specific tests. 3. Document Verification, Calibration Certificate, Traceability Documents, Test Certificates. 4. Component and Mock Verification, Make, Model, Location, Serial No and Testing by Positive Material Testing. 5. Physical Verification and Overall Dimension. Note. FAT or SAT are preferred but not mandatory, depends on the system, vendor and client agreement. What is Installation Qualification? Qualification and validation should establish and provide documentary evidence that the premises, supporting utilities and equipment have been built and installed in compliance with their design specification. The installation qualification section of qualification determines that the system or equipment, as installed, meets the requirement of the design drawings and specifications. Each type of system or equipment may be subject to a different set of IQ tests depending on the system. Installation qualification consists of following steps. 1. Physical verification, overall dimension of system and equipments. 2. Utilities and equipments. All the utilities and equipment installed at appropriate location as per pre-approved protocol. 3. Identification of components, identification and verification of installed components as per drawing and IQ protocol. 4. Drawing verification, all the as-built GIA drawing electrical drawings, PNID drawing and equipment layouts need to be verified. 5. Document verification, calibration certificates, traceability certificates, technical specification documents, operational manual, mock certificates, etc. What is operational qualification? Qualification and validation should establish and provide documentary evidence that the premise Supporting utilities and equipment operate in compliance with their design specification. Documented verification that the system or subsystem performs as intended overall anticipated operating ranges. It is designed to verify that the system or equipment meets the required operating parameter ranges and can be controlled at such. This testing must be done using test methods described in the protocols. In the case of utilities, testing will be carried out to determine that the system can adequately service all users at normal peak loads. In order to demonstrate reproducibility, replica testing may be performed. OQ should include but is not limited to the following. 1. Test based on process knowledge. 2. Test to confirm upper and lower limits. 3. Operational, cleaning and maintenance procedure. 4. Alarm testing, training and calibration of instruments. Test methods for operational qualification of cleanroom. 
for classification purposes E and or ISO 14644 to 1 methodology defines both the minimum number of sample locations and the sample size based on the class limit of the largest considered particle size and the method of evaluation of the data collected. In E and or ISO 14644 to 3 define the test method, apparatus and evaluation of collection of test data, 1. Airflow velocity and air changes per hour, 2. Installed filter integrity test, 3. Air pressure difference test, 4. Airborne particle concentration and VPC, 5. Area recovery test, 6. Temperature and humidity test, 7. Air flow direction and visualization, containment leak test. What is the role performance qualification? Qualification and validation should establish and provide documentary evidence that a specific process will consistently produce its predetermined specifications and quality attributes. It is designed to verify that the system or equipment meets the required performance parameter ranges and can be controlled at such. It is designed to establish a performance baseline to provide assurance that the system can operate as intended. Tests using production materials, qualified substitutes, or simulated products proven to have equivalent behavior under normal operating conditions with worst-case batch sizes where appropriate. Tests to confirm upper and lower operating limits or worst-case conditions. Performance qualification demonstrate that system is capable of achieving GMP requirements listed in URS. Following are the test methods used for performance qualification. 1. Airflow direction and visualization test in operational condition. 2. Air velocity and air changes per hour. 3. Temperature and humidity test. 4. Installed filter system leakage test. 5. Air pressure difference test. 6. Recovery test. 7. Airborne particle concentration non-viable particle count. 8. Microbiological monitoring, settle plate monitoring, air sampling, contact plate or surface monitoring. This slide contains air velocity and air changes per hour. First we will discuss air velocity. 1. Purpose of air velocity. To demonstrate airflow direction and its uniformity of a velocity conform to the design and performance specifications. 2. Apparatus. Thermal anemometer, vein type anemometer, pedostatic tube and manometer, air flow capture hood with measuring device. 3. Precaution, correct probe direction, sufficient time for measurement and measuring plane perpendicular to supply air flow. 4. Procedure, minimum number of measuring points grid cells should be determined by formula N equals under root V10 multiplied by A, a means area in meter square at least from 1.5 measuring samples for from corners and one from center. It should be measured for each filter outlet or fan filter unit. Average airflow velocity shall be calculated for each filter. 5. Test report. Type of test or measurements. Measuring conditions, calibration status, measuring location or distance from the filter, occupancy, state and result of measurements. Now the second part of this slide. Air changes per hour. 1. Purpose, to determine the rate expressing number of air changes per unit of time, calculated by volume of air supplied to a room, in meter cube per hour divided by the room volume in meter cube. 2. Apparatus, thermal anemometer, thane type anemometer, pedostatic tube and manometer, air flow capture hood with measuring device. 3. Precaution, correct probe direction, sufficient time for measurement, and measuring plane perpendicular to supply air flow. Four, Procedure. Given formula will be used for measurement of air changes per hour. Total airflow shall be calculated by submission of average airflow velocity of each terminal filter of respective room. 5. Test report. Type of test, measurements, occupancy state and result of measurements. Installed filter system leakage test to confirm that the final high-efficiency air filter system is properly installed by verifying the absence of bypass leakage in the air filter installation, and that the filters are free of defects like small holes and other damage in the filter medium, frame, seal and leaks in the filter bank framework. 1. Procedure. It contains Measure air velocity, measure upstream concentration, scan entire downstream face of filter, perimeter, seal joints and filter frame, held at a 3 cm or less. Scan at a rate of 5 cm per second with overlapping strokes. 2. 
test report, it contains test method, calibration status, filter ID and location, upstream concentration, acceptance criteria, downstream result. Air pressure difference test. Following are the checks used in air pressure difference test. 1. To verify the capability of the cleanroom air movement system to maintain the specified pressure differential between the cleanroom and its surroundings. 2. The test is applicable to each of the designated occupancy state. 3. The pressure differences between each individual clean room, clean zone and the connected adjacent room should be measured. The pressure can be measured through permanent installed measuring points when the measured differential pressure is lower than an agreed value. Direction of flow between rooms should be confirmed by flow visualization methods. 4. Report. It shall include but not limited to following. 1. Test conditions. 2. Measuring instruments calibration status. 3. Cleanliness class. 4. Occupancy state. 5. Actual observed value. 6. Acceptance criteria. Airborne particle concentration also known as non-viable particle count test. 1. Purpose. To determine the cleanliness level of the area is characterized by the maximum allowable numbers of 0.5 micrometer and 5.0 micrometers particles per cubic meter of air at a designated location. 2. Deriving the number of sampling location. Derive the minimum number of sampling location in L from the table 1 mentioned in ESO 14644 to 1. Area of clean room less than 1 meter square to 1000 meter square. Formula is mentioned in this slide. For more information regarding airborne particle concentration, overview this table. Three, sampling procedure. Set up particle counter as per OEM recommendation of in-house SOP. Sampling probe shall be positioned towards airflow. Ensure the selected occupancy state established. Single sampling volume as per given formula. Record the results of each sample measurements as the number of particles in each single volume of the considered particle sizes appropriate to the relevant ESO EU cleanliness classes. 4. Test report. It contains instrument ID, calibration status, date and time of study and duration of sample in time or volume, cumulative number of particles at each location, average concentration of particles. Name of the equipment used for airborne particle concentration is light scattering airborne particle counter. Picture is also attached for reference. Microbiological monitoring and its classification. Microbiological environmental monitoring is a means of demonstrating an acceptable microbiological quality in the controlled environment and detecting changes in a timely manner. 1. Settle plate. Settle plates can detect bacteria and fungi that descend in the column of air over the plate. Exposure time, not more than 4 hours. Incubation period, 5 days. SCDA 90 mm plates are used for this application. 2. Air sampling. Volumetric air samples can quantify bacteria and fungi suspended in the airspace surrounding open product. Sample volume should be 1,000 liters. Incubation period should be 5 days. 3. Contact plate. Contact plates should be used to detect microorganisms on surfaces that could lead to product contamination. Incubation period should be 5 days. Recovery test to determine whether the clean room or clean zone is capable of returning to a specified cleanliness level within a finite time. After being exposed briefly to a source of airborne particulate challenge, key points for recovery test. 1. Recovery performance is evaluated by using the 100 ration 1 or 10 ratio 1 recovery time or the cleanliness recovery rate 2. Set up the particle counter at a worst case location at sampling interval of 1 minute. 3. The considered particle size used in this test should be less than 1 micrometer. 4. Note the time at which particle concentration reached 100x of targeted particle concentration threshold. 5. Note the time at which particle concentration reaches the targeted particle concentration cleanliness level. 6. Test report. Include following checks. 1. Measuring instrument, details and calibration status. 2. Occupancy state. 3. Result of measurements. 4. Graphical representation for recovery rate. Temperature and humidity monitoring. To verify the air temperature and relative humidity levels are within the control limits over the predefined time period. 
a 24 hours to 72 hours temperature mapping with schematic location diagram and rationale or justification for measuring locations as agreed between vendor and client. Apparatus used for temperature and humidity monitoring is wired or wireless digital thermometers. Report of temperature and humidity monitoring must contain instrument, details, calibration, status, raw data, occupancy state and average value. Airflow direction and visualization to demonstrate that the airflow direction, its uniformity of velocity by means of visualization and conform to the design and performance specifications. Apparatus used for this test is aerosol generator, FOD generator containing water or glycols or alcohols. Image processing techniques method used for air visualization by tracing the generated fog or mist by fog generator, video frames or films used for quantitative characterization of airflow by two-way dimensional air velocity vectors in area. Test report must contain occupancy state, filter ID and location, air pressure difference before start of study and evaluation of video frames. Now we will discuss the summary of what we have learned in this video. 1. Introduction In introduction we have discussed definitions of following topics. 1. Qualification 2. Validation 3. Specification 4. Clean area 5. Clean zone 6. Airborne particles 2. Qualification approach In qualification approach we had discussed qualification planning and V model for systems. 3. Qualification stages. In qualification stages, we had discussed URS, DQ, FAT, SAT IQ, and OQ. 4. Performance qualification. In performance qualification, we had discussed test methods, air velocity and ACPH, installed filter integrity test, air pressure difference test, airborne particle count, microbiological monitoring, temperature and humidity, area recovery, air flow direction, and visualization. Reference for this topic. 1. Annex 2 of WHO Guidelines for Pharmaceutical, 2. Annex 1 of European Guidelines Volume for Manufacture of Sterile Medicinal Products, 3. Annex 15 of European Guidelines Volume for Qualification and Validation, 4. Annex 1 of PICS Manufacture of Sterile Medicinal Products, 5. Part 1 of ESO 14644 Classification of Air Cleanliness by Particle Concentration, 6. Part 3 of ESO 14644 Test Methods Thanks for your time and support. Stay connected with me to learn more interesting pharmacological studies. Must ask any question or confusion in comment box. Let me know which medicine information you want next. Thank you.